Good morning. I don't know about you, Joe, but have you seen what the average mortgage payment is right now? It's, well, I mean, I, got, I imagine it's pretty affordable, right? No. Nope. no. Wait, wait, wait a minute. What? No. We had rates so low for so long. What happened? Well, when you jump the rates up, this is what happens. This is from Black, Black Knight oh this goodness. morning. 51% of home buyers face $2,000 plus monthly mortgage payments. And almost With a quarter with 3,000 plus. 18, 3, well, you know, these, wait, wait, these are like 51%. Like we've just got a bunch of millionaires here, like 3,000 plus, like, like these are million dollar homes or something, yeah. right? <laughs> no, no. Okay. These I, are like, I, I know, I know you're sitting there going, okay, if we, if I've got someone buying a $400,000 house, they're putting 5% down, their payment's going to be roughly what? And what the interesting thing is, is this is just principal and interest. Yeah, twenty three hundred dollars. That's a, I mean that, and that's a hard. That's the average. Like that, that's, that's a your number average. right there. Principal and interest, and that's why they're saying three thousand plus. Like, yeah, taxes, insurance, depending on where you are. State. I mean, Florida tax and insurance just, uh, are going to be another seven, eight, nine hundred dollars probably. But when you actually factor interest, taxes, insurance, which is what they escrow and they're they collect every month. Yeah. It's $3,000 and you just week was, I, I thought we'd see some relief, you know, based on the news we had gotten last week. It, it started like, great last week. Like we had some great movement. Markets were kind of like we saw rates start to go down a little bit because we had some yeah. job data that wasn't good. Yep. But then this yep. week we had what? Nothing. We very Nothing. neutral, like very middle of the pack. No news yeah. like, you know, hey, not worse, not better, nothing. But yeah. rates reacted. Yeah, horribly. look at look at what happened to the to the ten year T. Here we go. Well, end of the week last week, we started. We, you know, we had started to have that nice decline. You know, we got down to four point oh nine. I was kind of hoping we'd break four percent. Exactly. Just I'm like, maybe we got enough. Maybe we got enough steam to break it. But coming out of Labor Day, bam, we're we're getting close to that high again of mm -hmm. four point four point three four yeah we're right there and we're right and, there i mean four point two eight i mean today the the jobs report right came out and mm -hmm. it kind of was in my mind i'm like it's hearing that i think we could see it worsening a little bit you know see yeah. rates worsening because they came back and said continuing claims went down for unemployment yep here we go you know this is out of yahoo news the rules that continue to receive jobless benefits beyond the first week fell sharply to 1. million in the week ending August 26th, which from a revised 1.79 from a week earlier. So you've got, what's that, about 40, 50,000 50, people who came off of the um, long-term unemployment rolls. But we also, 300 and some, 300 and what, 350 less jobs available than we had a month ago. Well, yeah, it is. It's good news. But if you only, if, if those of those 300 plus thousand, only 50,000 were people who found jobs, that tells me that businesses are tightening and withdrawing some of their, some of their job openings. When I look at it, I don't see that as enough. I don't see that as enough for the rates back up. And then we come in here, our mortgage city is at a 20 year low, 28 year low. So our pool of buyers back again. You can see it here, whereas the rates have increased, number of applications, that's for refinances. And you look at our our purchase end at 149. That's at the lowest level it's been since I believe 1995 or 1990. So we keep, keep pulling back here. Hmm. Oh, and then what we've been looking at is how is all this going to affect the, affect the Fed, and that's that's really the big question we've had for the past couple couple months, because we're really kind of hoping that the Fed is going to pull back and just stop stop the rate increases, and right now 
you see everyone it slowly has peaked up since the beginning of august from 85 percent to now 93 percent. so everyone pretty sure and it's been priced into the market already that the fed's not going to raise rates september but then we jump into our november meeting and this is where it's starting to get a little scary again and i've got to look at this as a home buyer because back in august 68 percent of people that we weren't going to have rates raised again in november and now that's dropped to 54 percent and actually about 45 percent are feeling it's either going to be a quarter point increase a half a point increase you've actually got people who are looking at a half a point increase so let me hop back here making a lot of people nervous and how i would look at this as a home buyer where i'm have been feeling maybe i'm going to put it off i think i'm not going to so just i was just hitting on the fact that as a buyer i've got to start really looking at this going into november december january in that when you've got 45 percent of people believing that the fed's going to do another rate increase mm -hmm. in november you know that's going to affect our, our the 10-year t which is going to more than likely push rates up again so yeah. we i mean you know I, I we didn't hit it yet but we're darn close i made the prediction i think back in february that we'd be an eight by the end of the year we'd be at that eight percent interest rate if this happens, if they do that rate increase in November, yeah, I think we're there. Yeah, I think uh, as a matter of fact, 100%. I'm 100% positive that we're going to be there. So when I'm looking at this as as a as a buyer mm -hmm. of a home, I'm kind of looking at going, is now the time that I want to go ahead and purchase? It goes up another quarter of a point. I mean, you're already looking at an average of twenty three hundred dollars. You know, are we going to jump to twenty an average of twenty five hundred dollars? Jump to an average of twenty seven. You look at the income that's required for that. I mean, you you're going to have people making you know families making a hundred thousand. They're not going to be able to touch anything mm -hmm. whatsoever. The the thing I find interesting though is KB the um, CEO of KB Homes came out yesterday, mm -hmm. and even with the rates going up, he's still feels that home buyers are in the driver's seat, or home builders, excuse me, are in the driver's seat, and that they're going to continue to have very good um, opportunities out there. Main one being no inventory of resales, which goes back to the same thing we've been discussing for months, interest rate on a you know, 15, 20, 30 year mortgage. Why am I going to want to put my house up, up on the market? Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. And it's just, and I can, I can, I can understand because they can absorb. So far, the prices haven't fallen, mm -hmm. and until the resale inventory comes back up, it's not. It's not, it's not going to bring their prices down, mm -hmm. and they're absorbing some of that cost of the rate buy downs in in the in the price of the home because I can they can still get it appraised at a high level. When you yep. look at the overall value of homes it's flatlined it's pretty mm -hmm. much flatlined so they're still able to sell the homes at this price with a cost with a cost that's here and maybe they've got to absorb a little bit for the rate buy downs you know seven ten fifteen thousand dollars so they cut their profit margin maybe gets cut from 30 percent to 25 percent mm -hmm. that's not a bad deal no. and when you're the only one on the block it's a better deal overall than it has been for a long time. Oh, looking at that, it's just the next couple months is going to make a is going to make a big difference. Hoping we don't like we seem to do every going into every elections, we don't get an October surprise. I don't know why they like to do them in October, <laughs> but boy, do they always like to give us some kind of of surprise in October and. There's just there's a lot of back end economic news. I mean, China's still there's they're hurting. They're mm -hmm. they're dropping 
They're trying to boost their currency. Japan's minister of finance came out, I think it was yesterday, again said that they're they're willing to prop up prop up their their currency. And to do that, they're gonna have to dump US dollars in order to buy their dollars, their yep. their currency. So when that happens, all of a sudden you get a flood of of US Treasury notes on the market. What's it gonna do? Mm -hmm. It's gonna increase it has to increase the yield in mm -hmm. order to sell them, which again can hurt mortgage rates. And then I think one of the biggest things that a lot of people haven't looked at and they've got to consider is Saudi Arabia and Russia both said they're going to extend production cuts of 1.3 million barrels combined until the end of December. And what's mm -hmm. that doing to our gas prices? And again, we're, to bring them we're up. averaging what about here about 370 mm -hmm. a gallon right now. Yep. So which brings <laughs> some bring it brings well, what's gas it cost prices to fill up, up which that brings truck? inflate. You don't want to know. I, it really. <laughs> I. Oh gosh. Um. It's 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 affordable. Makes me want to work from home more often. <laughs> but but I think I think uh, you know you're gonna see like gas prices go up. That means inflation's gonna go up. Right, continue to see and stay in the you know inflationary numbers might be higher, which is what this is exactly what Powell doesn't want to see. Which yep. if those numbers are going to go up, he's going to drive it drive to force it elsewhere, which is yep. in the federal fund. Yeah, those court will only hurt it's, us. It's on. those court. It's those core numbers. I thought it was going to be a boring week. I'm like, this is you know coming out of coming out of Labor Day. You know, usually usually very quiet. You know, last week. Like we mentioned, we had a good week. You know, we started to see some some pullback on the on the ten year, getting us closer back down to that seven percent. And the, I mean, it, it's not like there's any really exciting news. Fifty. I mean, if it pullback in long term unemployment. I don't feel like that's like anything that would rock my world if I'm the Fed. Well, but I mean, everyone else this, is freaking out about it. The, the part that amazes me is like, it doesn't mean that they're not unemployed still. It just means they ran out of benefits potentially. That, that's it. It's, that's a that's a good point is how many did run out of benefits and how many right. actually got jobs. Because you don't, you don't see that breakout in the news articles. You always get that sensationalism. Oh, 50,000 people. Well, when you've got 330 million people in the United States, okay, say 150 million of them are, are full-time employees. That's nothing. I mean, it, it literally is nothing percentage wise. You get that sensationalism and oh my gosh, the Fed's gonna, gonna change their ways. They're gonna, you know, the economy's too hot. It's like, I, you know, you and I get out there, we talk to a lot of people. I don't know too many people feel the economy's like smart. Right and that's the thing, like everybody, I think everybody sees and senses like what's being shared isn't what's happening, right? Like we all feel that way, right? Yep. Yep. Frustrating because you, you know, when you look at the numbers underneath, it just doesn't doesn't make sense. Doesn't add up for us. So, but let's take a look at our numbers here in Orlando for the week. Um, end of the month last week, so we did take a little bit of a jump. We jumped to 515 from 410, which that's typical end of the month. <laughs> Only a hundred, 105, that seems a little low, still seems very tight for our overall market. The median price, 425, is a change of 3.7%, That, but that's right within our window that we normally are. And we did see a little decrease, which kind of makes sense because we had more sales for the end, for the end of the month. Townhomes, these things are just flat. I mean, end of the month and you only jumped What's that? 21, 21 closings for the month, you know, for the last week. And our inventory went down a little bit. As far as our original list to sales price, which is, of course, one of our favorite things, we're kind of sitting there at the 95.5% and 97%. And then our average days on market still sitting above 30, 41, which if you've got no one filling out mortgage applications, properties are going to sit longer. Pretty, pretty simple math there. But then you see our graph for the weekly sales and since July, boy, is it I yeah. mean, pretty much sitting right on that line, right there. Mm -hmm. And I'm expecting this to drop back down. 
Yeah. So I think our, our period average is going to start, or I think we're going to start to see that drop. That's not a lot of houses. And then we've consistently increased days on market over the past month. And again, less people out filling out mortgage applications, houses are going to sit longer. And that's something that we has to be informed to the sellers is that, hey, you know, yes, our inventory is still relatively tight over We've got a heck of a lot less buyers than we we've had in the years it's, it's been what less uh, a 40 percent cut even more than that possibly and this is something haven't we haven't looked at in probably over a year but i was when i was scrolling through the slides for this week it kind of stood out to me for the first time in a long time in the temporary off market and the withdrawn properties because nobody withdrew their properties back a year ago, year and a half ago, no one was withdrawing properties whatsoever. But what are we starting to see? We had 130 people withdraw their homes from the market last week. Look at it for the month of August, basically about 400 of the listings were withdrawn, were withdrawn from the market. Why do you withdraw? because you're not getting any hits you're you're not getting the price you want you know you're just it, it's the, the sale where you, you know, the level of expectation of the time period for a home to sell isn't isn't fitting what you believe that it should be mm -hmm. so we're starting to see this pick up where we have we hadn't seen that you know in an over really a year year and a half this number pick up so that's that's kind of, that's kind of interesting to me, mm -hmm. is that you may have some people who are hold, who were holding out for a certain price, and they're like, well, if I'm not going to get that price, I'm not going to sell. That, that's just plain and simple. I, I'm not. I know what my house is worth. Well, it's but not, not even that. Is, but it's kind of that I've got to get that number because then they see what's going on with interest rates. Yep. I can't. I literally can't sell my house if I don't get this for my house. I can't buy this house. So, you know what? I'm just going to sit. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to sit. I'll wait it out. I'll wait it out. And the way things are looking, it's going to be a longer wait than we ever, we had anticipated. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I Patience think all the, expert, all the experts expected rates to be back down in the sixes by this point, you know, all yeah. the, you know, and they're yeah. not, and they're going to sit. And the question is, is the longer we stay up in this range, yeah, I think the more, the, the longer, that range is going to last. Yep. Yep. Agree with you. And then with the condos, same same thing, sitting about 90, 95, just over pretty close to 98, but not quite 98%. Mm -hmm. The days on market did drop a little bit. And you see our inventory took a little bit of a dip, but we're still 15% higher than we were at the beginning of the year. And I'm starting to get those price cut notifications on an, almost on a daily basis now on the condo so people are people are looking at it going you know maybe i got a price a little high and you know as well as i do you know more difficult to finance so mm -hmm. you've got to you've got to be got to be a little more creative in that in that market and then this was the again this is another reason why i pulled up this slide which we haven't looked at look at the number of withdrawals of condos in the past two weeks it has more than doubled, more than doubled. So you're getting these properties that are sitting, some of them 90, 120 days. And people are saying, I'm not gonna sell them. You know, maybe they're pulling them back saying, okay, I'm just gonna rent it instead. Or just, again, nope, I'm gonna wait it out. Wait it out, I'm gonna get, I wanna get my price and I'm gonna get my price. So just interesting week, you know, overall Orlando markets just Holdings, holdings. We're not seeing price drops um, where other parts of the country. I got a friend in Austin, um, mm -hmm. Texas, and they're getting battered right now. They're down mm -hmm. about 20, 20. Mm -hmm. And I just found it very interesting that the home builders are feeling as strong as they are, which kind of makes a lot of sense. Even though KB, KB, it makes more sense because they're more of a entry level type mm -hmm. product and their pricing is more aggressive. But when you're looking at some of the higher end guys like Taylor Morrison, I got their inventory sheet for this week. 
and they had new on several of their properties. And a lot of those, a lot of those are on homes that are, you know, 650, 700 they're doing 30, yeah. 40, 50 decrease of rain, um, the buy down incentives at the same time. Mm. So that, that quote luxury end is slowing down. Mm -hmm. I think the I think the guys the builders who are who have really kind of put themselves in a position of more of the entry level, if they can keep their prices at that that four hundred thousand within that four hundred thousand dollars plus or minus maybe twenty five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, what we see a lot in Deltona, Deland, DeBerry, out towards uh, Sorrento, I think they're going to continue to have strong demand. And I think you're gonna put, I think the other thing you'll see them do is they'll, they'll pull back a little bit on the number of houses that they start mm -hmm. because we don't wanna oversaturate the market. So yeah. I think we, we're gonna see permits start to pull back a little bit because it's like anything, you wanna, you wanna constrain that, that inventory so that you can keep the prices up to mm -hmm. where they are. Yeah. I mean, that's what the builders are wanting and playing right now. That's, that's yep. the key. Keep yep. like, they're not worried about retail market, so now they can kind of drive their their market. Yeah, I mean, Lennar, was it Lennar and it may have been Taylor Morrison, not positive. Uh, Orlando Business Journal came out where the two of them combined to buy 300 acres outside Claremont at an, at a, at an astronomical price. So if, they're, if you, you still got the builders buying these large lots, they got better economists than you and I are in you know on their staff you know they're see they're seeing something that we're not seeing and they're not stopping the building they're mm -hmm. they're continuing to do it and they're looking you know from the time they break ground to probably to the time that they build that first house it's going to be you know six not even a year so they're always projecting out so they're seeing something that that we're not seeing maybe they're maybe they're seeing that they think the interest rates are going to drop I don't see it right now, but maybe there's something in their in their analysis that, that they feel that it's gonna drop a little bit. All right, sir. Good to see you. Good luck with the truck. Okay, you know, it's been a it's been a journey. So <laughs> so but um you know, we're gonna have a good week. Let's crush it and uh, let's see, let's hope for some state let's hope these rates just kinda settle down and stop moving the way they've been. Yeah, we got I I'm gonna, I need to pull up the economic news for next week and just see what, what is there that, that can help us, you know, give us some good news. We've, we've been beat up enough for the past couple of weeks. You know, yeah. give us a little good news. The, the only bad part about that is it's generally bad news for the economy as a whole that gives our interest rates good news. Yeah, I know, I know. We'll see, we'll see how things go. Thank you everyone. Uh, please like and subscribe and we'll see you again next Thursday. Take care, bye.